Hello Tipsers and Tricksers, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Vidge Tips and Tricks video. Today is a very autumnal video that I've been trying to make for a really, really long time. I started it in fact back in Brighton where I collected a whole lot of beautiful flowers and leaves and berries and I dried them in preparation for this video. And then we spontaneously decided to come to France and I had to throw it all in the bin. But I have gone through the process again for you guys and now I'm going to make some beautiful autumn decorations, some bell cloche decorations, so under glass in a beautiful dome. I'm going to show you guys how I go about making that, so stay tuned. What have you got? If you pretend like I've done this before because I haven't but you know it doesn't look too complicated I think I can probably make this work it feels very like crafty fun figure it out as you go so let's give it a try earlier today I made some little Fimo pumpkins I will do a little close-up for you guys so you can see them properly but I made them by hand with Fimo that I got at a local craft store. Fimo is a type of modeling clay that you can bake in the oven to make the pieces hard. I found it quite easy to work with. It's kind of like a plasticine consistency. And I molded different colors together and put like little speckles into the pumpkin to give it some kind of color. And I used various tools around the house to give it texture because you know, we've all seen people do amazing things, hello Christine McConnell, with Fimo, but they have all these tools that I just wasn't able to get my hands on at the moment. Because I'm in the middle of the countryside, because of the lockdown, it would just take forever for me to order things on Amazon, and I wanted to get this video done. So, I just made do with what I had, and you know what? It worked perfectly fine. I also have some different varieties of moss and lichen here that I've allowed to dry over the last week. I pre-dried some beautiful flowers from Bernadette and Vincent's garden. You never really know how dried flowers are gonna turn out. Roses always turn out really beautiful, as does lavender, but other ones look really different after they've been dried. Here you can see them freshly hanging, but for a little idea of how to dry flowers if you haven't done it before, always remove the foliage and twigs etc from the bottom of the stems to give as much room for aeration as possible. And I like to trim off any thorny bits just so that when you're putting it all together you're not stabbing yourself. And even with things like holly, these dry really, really quickly, but it is a good idea to hang them up anyway, just to make sure that you don't get any mold growing in your bouquets or in your cloche. Tie them up with elastic bands or ribbons as I've done here, right at the end and hang them in a cool spot with nice, even temperature and a bit of fresh air for a couple of weeks. Anything that you don't need to dry that's already dry, I just like to stick up as a decoration in the meantime. I also have some foam, like, this is actually called a foam brick. There we go, it's very technical. You need a foam brick. These are often used for flower arranging because you can poke the flowers into them and the flowers stay in the position you want. So I'll be using that. I'll also be using it to build like a little platform at the bottom of my cloches so that I can control where things sit and give things a bit of height as well. So definitely going to be using that. I have my hot glue gun because you never know when you're going to need a hot glue gun, guys. Always comes in handy. And I also picked up some of these miniature pine cones. There are pine cones out the front of the property, but they're giant and they would take up the entire cloche and they wouldn't even fit in this one. So uh, that's why I got these. These have got like little bits of fake snow on them. I decided I liked it. looked kind of like they had moss or something growing on them as opposed to the perfectly pristine plain ones that I thought looked a little bit too trite. So I went with these ones and then I have some more flowers that are not, I didn't dry them but they were already like dead dried when I picked them. So we've got some twigs and leaves and berries and things over here out of shot that I will utilize as well. So let's get started. Trying to figure out how to get me and the cloches in shots. So you're just gonna have like a chopped off head be. But this is what I'm working with guys. This is actually a jar, hence why there is a sticker on the bottom of it that I forgot to take off, but I'll take it off later with some water. But it's just a normal like stopper jar, quite big, about the size of my head. 
but turned upside down, it works perfectly well as a cloche, but it was about a third of the price. First thing we need to do is break open this foam brick. Because this width isn't too bad for this, it overhangs a little bit. So I'm gonna cut this like a wedge so that I have like a little bit of height to work with. It's extremely easy to cut. So that's that. Okay, so I have my little cheese on toast here. I think I'll shave away at it. So I've got like a little hill. Yes, I am just using a steak knife. It's all very technical here. So created like a little step like that. I'm gonna try placing some things on it. I wanted my pumpkin. I just keep one pumpkin for my, for my mini one. So I think that's looking good. Just to give myself an idea of how it's gonna look once everything's sitting on it. And it's gonna have flowers and stuff around it. So I think that's good. I'm gonna glue this down with my hot glue gun now. Ah, good one, Dum Dum. I want to make sure that the moss that I put on it is going to cover all the way around, like right down and over to here. So I wanna leave enough space that I can actually fit it in to the sides. Yes, that's the working. Cool bananas. She's stuck. Okay, I think next I'm going to remove that knife and put it down in my feet so I can accidentally step on it. And then uh, play with some of this here, moss and lichen. I'm quite liking, if you can see, that fits almost perfectly into the little dipped out space that I've created. Obviously it's gonna start getting very tall, but like I have quite a lot of height to work with as you're gonna see. So I'm not worried about it building up. That'll be good because I don't want like the whole top half of the cloche to be empty. Now I'm just gonna start with the sides and this front section because obviously if I get too overzealous too quickly, I will have nowhere to put my flowers. So I'm only doing this little bit because I know the pumpkins are going to sit on here and I won't be having any flowers obscuring that otherwise. Whoops. Uh, my glue gun's getting out of control as usual. I don't want to be covering this back section because otherwise it's going to be very difficult for me to push my flowers into that. And I think it would be better to cover the stems if I put the moss on afterwards and I'll be probably using the lichen and this longer moss lichen. I don't really know my mosses and lichens very well. I know that's lichen, I'm not really sure what this is. I'm just gonna call it moss. So I'm gonna do all around the edges and up the back of this, but this top section I'm gonna leave clear. How will my pumpkin look sitting on there? Pretty darn cute, that's how it looks. Fresh moss and lichen would work really nicely, but then it could go moldy inside because you've got the lid on the cloche. So you do have to use dried or you're gonna have a pretty manky cloche pretty quickly. No one wants a manky cloche, guys. Here is our little magical garden. I've put moss all the way around, as you can see. I've left this little front bit. I kind of like that. Uh, I may change my mind, but for now I like it. And our cloche does fit on. I think designing where I'm going to put my various flowers is the next thing I should do and I need to work it out in relation to the height of the cloche. Okay I have a very large selection of flowers in front of me and also some very cute little tendrils of ivy that I picked up, occasional leaf that I can always glue back into place, these very cute little berries. So I'm going to start playing and poking things into a bit of foam that we have to work with there. Okay, so that first one in. I do want it to come quite close to the top. I'm quite happy with that. It actually like it touches the top just so that is the perfect height. 
I do want it to look like kind of an explosion of a garden happening in there. We probably won't be able to see it, but I actually love its little <laughs> curled up leaf. This is gonna take me a little bit of playing around, so rather than talking through every little bit that I do and every little decision I make, because this video will be a thousand years long if I do that, I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing, but I'll fast forward through it and I'll chuck in a voiceover, so I'm gonna get stuck into it. This is kind of self-explanatory, B. I don't know if this really needs a voiceover. I'm sure the people will get the idea, you know, stick flowers in and just check that it fits inside the cloche so that you don't overdo it. That's pretty much it. So I've gotten this far. Come up close for you guys so you can see. I'm really liking how it looks, but I have to be careful not to leave a big blank spot at the back because obviously we can see the cloche from every angle because it's glass. So I'm going to fill in the back a bit now. Okay, I think that's about as much as I can fit into the cloche like height wise and in this area. So I'm gonna start working around the base. I think I'm gonna try and put some lichen around the base of the flowers where they push into the foam just to try and hide that because once I've put other things in there, it'll be too late for me to try and hide. I'm losing the light. I hope I can get this done before the day ends. I think I can probably push the flowers through this. So I might try and put some of this in there now, especially if I kind of sparsely do it. Again, I'll show you guys how it's looking. So I've poked some of the other longer, fluffier moss into the edges here. I've not glued it down because if I put glue, it's gonna get hard underneath and I won't be able to push the flowers through. So I've just placed it and kind of shoved it there and the stems should go through pretty easily, hopefully. I think it's time for some roses. It's actually small divine. I found when putting the flowers in, it was best to just put them at different heights and kind of try and evenly distribute them and fill any big gaps, but generally not to overfill. Okay, so to show you at the back, I've just filled in the back section with these roses. I think that's looking quite nice. Don't forget that when the glass is on it, like the flowers push up against the glass as well. So it does look a little bit fuller. So you don't want to overfill inside. I've actually gone and got some tweezers to get stuck into the front here because it is so incredibly difficult to get my fingers in there. And the rose stems are so thin that I don't want to snap them. I've just tried placing my pumpkins, which I think look really cute. It's a really good idea to glue down anything that you think might roll around, especially if you're going to give one of these as a Christmas present or something. So I glued down anything that wasn't well and truly stuck in naturally and glued things together as well, just to make sure that things don't move. Cause once you put the cloche on, that's it. Tweezers are really, really handy for getting in here with like the berries and stuff and like moving them around so I can poke them in and like lift things and move things without damaging anything because obviously all of these are very susceptible to breaking. Now I'm going to glue this flower to the edge of this one here just to stop it from hanging down because it's going to get crushed by the cloche when I pop it in. So I'm going to pop just a little bit of glue in here. That should be enough to get the flower to just gently stick. I'm going to spread some of its petals out a bit to try and cover up the glue. And the same at the back here with this rose. I'm going to pop a little bit of glue at the back of the rose and smush it against something to get it to stay. Okay, it's definitely time to check if the closure is going to fit on. So I'm going to spin this around for you guys so you can see it. I want to make sure I can actually fit everything in there. <laughs> so. The trickiest part is definitely these thistles. I've got all these little spiky bits, but I am confident it's going to fit. So I'm not going to push it because obviously anything that gets bent I want it to bend and then stay rather than snapping off when I keep taking it back on and off so as long as I'm sure I can get the cloche on that's the main thing now it is looking quite um I guess bouquet-y but I want it to look a little bit more lush down here so I'm going to put some stuff in here 
There's obviously no hard and fast rule, but I wanted it to look very lush at the bottom, like an overgrown garden, which is why I've decided to really pop a lot around the base and then let it spread out towards the top. But you can really do whatever you want. Okay, so little update, here we go. I've popped the pine cones in. I think it's looking quite good. I don't wanna to do too much more. Uh, I think we're almost ready for the cloche. I've just pulled off some teeny weeny ivy leaves and I'm gonna see what they look like around the pumpkin. Okay, I haven't glued them down yet, but I kind of love them. Yeah, you can see there's one up in here and then the ones around here. I think they're really cute. So I'm gonna stick those on down. All right, the moment of truth. Can we get the glass on top of this? I still have the sticker on it, which I'm gonna have to remove, but I will remove it afterwards because I am losing the light. So don't come for me in the comments. I will remove the sticker. <laughs> I feel like those people who, you know, build ships in bottles, trying to get everything in without breaking anything is tricky. Front we're all right, it's just the back I need to worry about. I think we may have managed it. Okay guys, so here she is. Looking very cute all the way around. Yee! I'm so happy with it. I'm gonna have a muck around with the little one and uh, see how that goes. It probably won't be something I can show you today, but uh, yeah, I'm so happy with this one. And I think it would make a really cool Christmas present, so I might actually make a few more of these. I bought this in store, as I said, but they are readily available on Amazon. So it is definitely something that you can do during lockdown. As you can see, I collected all of the flowers and stuff apart from the pine cones on my walks over the last few weeks and dried them myself. So you really don't need a whole lot of stuff apart from the bell jar, a hot glue gun. I would highly recommend using a hot glue gun because obviously everything that you put needs to be kind of placed and immediately stay there. So you really need a hot glue gun for that. But again, I ordered mine off of Amazon. It cost me nine pounds. So like you can get hold of a glue gun for next to nothing. Ah, so many strings of hot glue. And then it's nice to give yourself like an activity over the two weeks to collect and dry the flowers and watch them as they dry. And some of this stuff I collected literally a couple of days ago, like the ivy and the berries and other things I've been drying for a couple of weeks. So it's a nice, quite calming activity for lockdown. This turned out so much better than I could have imagined. It's honestly not as hard as it looks, guys. So if you wanna make your own cloche, I'm actually going to be giving a kit away as a thank you to my patrons for making this video possible. So if you'd like to win your own kit, do go and check out my Patreon. So guys, that is the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the video and any suggestions for future videos. Come and follow me on my Instagram. Check out my Patreon. It is linked down below for extra content, tips and tricks and perks for different tiers. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.